Hi, my name is Enoch Hernandez, and I'm an application engineer at Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be discussing our fillet feature and how we can use all the different types of fillets to our advantage. Now let's start off by looking at this green block that's in front of me. If you'll notice, I have a fillet at an edge. Now if I don't mention this, you would have never guessed that there's actually a boss in there. If I right click and edit the fillet that's already existing, you'll notice that there a boss appears. The reason that it's not there is because if I go down to my fillet options, you'll notice that I have keep features checked off. If I check it on and click OK, the boss reappears, right? That fillet has completely consumed it, yet it's still there. So I'm going to edit that feature again, and you'll notice that once I click keep features off, I no longer get a preview of what it will look like inside the fillet, and it will be completely consumed. Another neat thing is that if you look at fillet parameters, it doesn't necessarily, I currently have mine at a symmetric. I could change it to symmetric and it would still do the exact same thing. The only difference between symmetric and asymmetric is that when you go to asymmetric, you'll be able to control both legs of the fillet instead of just having one. And you'll also notice that the profile will automatically change to be elliptic instead of being circular. And again, I can just leave it at symmetric and it'll still be fully consumed. I'll click OK and the boss is not there. Now I'm going to click on fillet again and we're going to talk about what's next to our constant size fillet, the variable size fillet. Now what this type of fillet allows me to do is that I can select one radius and have it gradually increase or decrease. So I'll go ahead and click this edge and I'll start off by selecting what I want it to be. So I'll start off at a radius say of 10 millimeters. The second one will end it at 60. As you can tell in the preview, it's showing us the gradual change from going a, a, a radius of 10 millimeters to 60 millimeters. And you're also going to notice that I have these three dots. Those three dots symbolize the percentage of how much it's actually turning into. Now, if I click individually, by default we'll have three, but if I click individually to them, you'll notice that this is what the rate is supposed to be at 75%. Again, it hasn't been assigned. Same thing for 50% or 25%. If I go back here and say the property manager for fillet, here actually tells me, again, it comes with a default of three. It's currently telling me that. I can increase this if I choose to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a radius, say, of 40 at 75%, and it will automatically adjust to it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click OK and accept this, and you'll notice how it kept all the parameters that I wanted and the gradual change of the fillet that we have. The next type of fillet that I'm going to use can come handy in two ways. Either by using two adjacent faces or if there are two edges that aren't physically touching, we can actually use the face fillet to create material between them. So for now, I'm just going to select two adjacent faces. So I'll select this top face here, select the other face here. And again, you have the option to make them asymmetric. You can add a core width, the whole line if you want to. I'm going to change now my radius to 90. And I also can change my profile again to conic row, conic radius, curvature continuous if I want to, and just click OK. The final fillet form that I'm going to show is called a full round fillet. Now this fillet comes in handy in case, let's say, you don't know what the radius is. You can use three adjacent faces and be able to turn whatever the thickness is into a fillet. So for example, if I click on this face, then I go back to the context box, make sure I'm selecting it, click the top face, and then I'll go to the last face right here. Again, you don't have to necessarily always start on this face. You can mix and match as long as they go in the right order and you have your middle in the middle where it belongs, you'll be okay. So again, if we look at our preview right now, I have full preview on. I always like to see what my fillets look like. You'll notice again that I don't have an input here for the radius that's grabbing the thickness and turning it into an actual fillet there. So I'm just going to click OK. So now we've come to the end of our blog. Through it, we've been able to see all the different types of fillets that we can use by modifying a constant size fillet. Again, learning how to use the key feature on so we can hide on and off or consume a boss or a hole. 
Then we talked about using a variable size fillet and in it we can see how we can gradually start from a very small fillet to a very large one and control exactly at either 25%, 75% what that fillet will be. And again, we can always use our face fillet for two adjacent faces and it comes very handy if we have a space between two edges that aren't touching to create material. And finally, we discuss what a full round fillet is and how we can use it in case we might not know a radius or we have three adjacent faces, it'll grab the thickness and turn that into a fillet. If you have any tips and tricks, please go on ahead and put that down in the comment section. Give us a like and subscribe. Thanks again.